I'm Russell T. Davis. I'm the writer of It's a Sin, the new drama coming up on Channel 4. I'm Ollie Alexander. I play Richie in It's a Sin. And today we're here with BuzzFeed UK to interview each other about growing up gay in Britain. What was your first gay inkling thought? Because I have a theory that we have kind of a sexual thought and then we immediately have a thought that I mustn't tell anyone this straight away. Well, when I, I think my first sort of gay thought, and I'm kind of putting this on it, re, you know, like retroact retroactively. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Um, and was I was probably around seven or eight years old, and I remember like touching noses with a with a, another boy at school, and uh, we would like rub our noses against each other, and it was sort of like it was sort of like a, we would giggle and we thought it was really funny, but the other but the other girls and the other boys in the class would go, ah, you're kissing or you're you know you're not you can't do that. So that was when I realised it was um, that was wrong. Wow. wow. Yeah. So that I, I knew soon. So from that moment onwards, I thought, okay, well people be you know being with another boy is wrong so i can't do that in front of people well what was it like for you when would you say your first sort of inkling well even more so i mean we wouldn't even have dared rub noses it's, it, honestly right it's, like that was kind of i'd love to pluck out similar examples but you wouldn't dare. i kind of hope things get better and yet i find people of your age and i find people who are 15 are still telling me the same old stories that there's still yeah. shame there's still fear I was bullied at secondary school, and and I think I was it gay I looked, thing or was it was it was it specifically gay? I was labelled gay without you know bef and I think this is really common. It's before I even came to know it in myself. You know, of course I suspected yeah. it, but I you know so the first time I'm wrestling with this word, this label is is someone attacking me. You've got to keep yourself hidden. And nonetheless, you keep yourself hidden, but nonetheless, I wasn't playing rugby or I wasn't playing football. So that alone starts. And they can tell there's something in the pack, in the herd. So during those days, like we're talking about like 12, 13 or 11, 12, 13, 14, what was it like at home? What were you there? Were you... Just everything at home was a bit of a mess, if I'm honest. I'd had a lot of issues with my dad. And then when he left my... When, when they split up, he left and moved away and I, I pretty much never saw him again. And I've seen him like a handful of times since that day, but um, I was also at the same time trying to sort of come to terms with being gay and it felt like that. So for me, like my teenage years in that way, and I know everyone's teenage years are really difficult, but yeah, yeah. for me, like that was, it was it was uh -huh. tough and it took me, took me a while to really kind yeah. of... Because you yeah. told me once that your mum didn't know you were gay. Is that right? That yeah. You had, you had to properly come up to her. Is that right? Yeah, to, I came out to her <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I asked her about this. I was like, Mum, well, how could, because actually, if I'm honest, I felt quite, I was so, I was like, how could my mum not have known I was gay, you know? How? Yeah, how? Yeah, yeah. But, but, but for her, she, and she was so honest when she told me this, and I really appreciated it. She just said that she didn't, you know, for her, I think she admitted she was scared to really acknowledge that her son was gay. And she was afraid of, of all the, uh, how difficult it would be for me. And, you know, when she told me that and she was crying and I was crying and it was such it was such a moment of, of actually healing because I felt like she was so honest in that moment and it and it made sense and I, you know, I'm not angry with her in any way and I'm not, you know, but it was an acknowledgement of like something that that we didn't know. Like none of us could know how to, to really navigate that. When did you, you know, were you able to be out? When did you feel able to be out? Yeah, this is the 70s really, but it's I did belong to a very marvellous youth theatre in West Morgan that wasn't gay. No one would ever say they were gay out loud, but it was the gayest space imaginable. And so many of us did turn out to be gay. And that was far more important to be in school or anything. So it allowed us to be as gay as we possibly could be. It was campus Christmas. Oh my God. I mean, what you see in it to see that Pink Palace crowd with their little jokes and their, and their little routines and stuff like that. That's me and my mates at, at age 18. Which is a great, I'm so glad I had that. Think, so. so you're going into like the 80s then. So then I went to university. And you just slowly start coming out. It's been a year saying I was bisexual, and then um, gradually kissing boys in secret and stuff like that. So just slowly easing out. When it came to my family, I mean, things. It's the eighties now, so things were getting better. And then, which is why I've written this drama. You know, along comes a disease that you know, it, it's it's such it's such a strange thing. That, you know, the law changed in nineteen sixty seven. So it takes that 10, 15 years for people to relax and start escaping the closet. And along comes a disease that apparently kills us. It's, it was amazing. It was, it was so strange. It felt like a door had been opened and the door had been slammed shut. 
I always connected HIV and AIDS with being gay, and I and I've tried to figure out where that came from. It's so hard to describe. This is why I wrote this because this strange days, but it's the only childhood I knew. It's the only growing up I ever knew. I didn't know any other. So it also seems kind of normal to me. I mean, for you, it's like it's like you're growing up and you're coming out to yourself and then to your family. It's like, at what time did a virus enter your thinking? When did that become part of the same thing? And bear in mind, no internet, no nothing. It's I, I look back and I can't think where we got our information from. You get a little paragraph in the paper and something in a gay magazine, except you were much more interested in turning the page in the gay magazine to see the naked boy on the next page and not reading that bit about people dying. So um, it was strange. Very much aware I wasn't in the kind of storm. I never lived in London. I think, you know, the bigger the city, the bigger things happen. Um, so I kind of avoided it a lot. And, um, but my friends, my friends started to, you know, there were illnesses and people started disappearing and, and strange days. It was something I didn't want to look at too closely because it was really scary. And I thought, oh God, you know, first of all, I don't want to be gay. And second of all, like, I definitely don't want to catch this whatever it was, because I didn't even really know. It wasn't until I got sort of into my early 20s, I was like, okay, I'm gonna properly like, you know, look at this. And this is why I'm so happy to have been involved in this show with you, because I think a story can move you in a way that nothing else can. Musically, what do you take out of the 80s? Do you, do you, is that a good period for you? I mean, you tell me, what was it like hearing all this music? You know, hearing was, Pet Shop Boys was, for the first time. It, it was amazing. Again, it's not normal. This is the only one, the only version right. I've heard. I can remember hearing Donna Summers, I Feel Love in one night. Yeah, what was that like? Literally, no, literally thinking that's me. There goes my soul. I think for me, the, the this is where a lot of a lot of artists nowadays talk about kind of uh, crying on the dance floor and this 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 um like blend of like euphoria and and emotion and I and that comes from I think disco and house and eighties music dance music. You must meet fifteen year olds now, fourteen year olds, gay kids, male, female, whatever, any sexuality coming out. Which is, I mean, it's a better world. I mean, I'm not saying there are huge problems. Obviously, this whole trans world blowing up is, it feels like the same old battle's happening over again and right. happening even more urgently. But but nonetheless, I, I find a lot of hope now in the outness of people. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, it shocks me, it amazes me to, you know, yeah. listen to some of these kids who are so yeah. uh, open and, and able to talk about yes. how they feel and their identities I didn't have that language at that age it's amazing isn't it and actually I would, so, I would suggest, suggest that HIV is not so much part of I'm not saying they're ignoring HIV I think it's because it's not a killer disease now so it's just talking about prep talking about whatever it's just completely normal to them it's a sin it starts on channel four on January the 22nd all five episodes will then be immediately available on all four and coming soon on HBO Max